All right, today we will see what happens to Laplace transforms and multiplication. Because the first thing to understand is that in general, it is not true that the Laplace transform of F times G is the Laplace transform of F times the Laplace transform of G. So in general, Laplace of F times G is not Laplace of F times Laplace of G. It do not be like that. In fact, very quick example, let F of T be two. So the constant function two and G of T be three. Then the Laplace of F times G that's the Laplace of two times three, which is the Laplace of six, which gives you six over S. But if you do the product of the individual Laplace transforms, L of F times L of G, that becomes L of two times L of three, which is two over S, times three over S, and that is six over S squared. S squared. And those two things are not the same. That said, it turns out that this property is true if we replace multiplication by a cool new operation called convolution. And I will define it and give you a cute demo and then state the main fact. So definition, convolution. So if I write F star G of T, that's a new function called the convolution. And what it is, it's a bit weird, but it's the integral from zero to t of f of t minus tau times g of tau d tau. So it's kind of you shift f multiplied by g and somehow take the average of that. And important to understand, here tau is a dummy variable that gets integrated out. So it is a function of t. And also, if you use a little u sub, so if you use, I think, u equals t minus tau, it's the same thing, turns out, as the integral of f of tau, g of, t minus tau, d tau, d tau, okay? And in other words, f star g is g star f. And there's a nice mnemonic because it gets very complicated. You know, where do you put the taus? Where do you put the t's? Mnemonic. Well, the sum always has, has to be t. So t minus tau plus tau is t and tau plus t minus tau is t. That's how you remember the order. And as I said, it is sort of like a multiplication of f and g, where here you translate f to the right and you multiply this by g and take sort of averages. And in fact, I want to show you a really cool demo I found that illustrates this quite nicely. Because here you have those two functions. On the one hand, this triangle and this square. And you will see soon what will happen is this square will move to the right and this triangle will stay in space and we will take 
some kind of average or area a bit under this. So once again, look at this rectangle in this demo. You see it moves to the right and then you take sort of an average between those two functions. And again, why do we care about this? So it is sort of like a multiplication, a multiplication of F and G, of F and G. And in fact, it does become multiplication if you take Laplace transforms. And that is the point of the very famous convolution theorem. Theorem. So it turns out if you take the Laplace transform of the convolution, F star G, you do get Laplace of F times Laplace of G. So that's the main thing uh, to remember for today. And you may wonder, by the way, why is this true? So essentially, it's based on writing the right-hand side as a double integral and changing variables. And if you're curious, in the appendix in the notes, I give a complete proof of why this is true. But really, the main point of today is to see applications of this. The first application is to find Laplace transforms. So I'll do two quick ones in this video and then a more elaborate one in the next ones. So let's find L of this function H, where H is given by this very weird integral. So it's giving integral. Integral from zero to T, E of minus two, T minus tau, sine of tau. Detail. Detail. So as complicated as this Laplace as this function is, we can still find the Laplace transform because notice this is like f of t minus tau, this is like g of tau. So in fact, h is the convolution of two functions. So here h of t is e of minus 2t convolved with sine of t. And so we can just use the convolution theorem. So L of h of t, that's L of e of minus 2t, start with sine of t. And again, by that theorem, this becomes L of E of minus 2T times L of sine of T. And that just becomes 1 over S plus 2. If S minus minus 2, then sine, I think, becomes 1 over S squared plus 2. Not bad, is it? Again, once you recognize this as a convolution, then you're in the game. EA Sports. On the other hand, let's do this in reverse. So let's find a function whose Laplace transform Laplace transform I almost wrote Fran Drescher for some reason. The nanny is so in this case, 1 over s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 1. And yes, I know usually you partially fractate, but what gives it away is I tell you, write your answer as an integral. So when I say write your answer as an integral, it means convolution. Integral. And 
It's literally the same thing in reverse. So we want to recognize those two things as Laplace transforms and use a convolution theorem. So trick. Notice one over S squared plus one. That's Laplace of sine of T. And one over S squared plus four. Careful, Laplace of one half sine of 2t, because sine of 2t gives you this extra factor of 2. And then let's look at our function, 1 over s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 4 now becomes Laplace of sine of t times Laplace of 1 half sine of 2t. And then by our convolution theorem, that becomes Laplace transform of the convolution. Stop. And then one half sine of two. So what is the answer? Precisely the convolution. So sine of t start one half sine of two t. And the question did ask to write this as an integral. So let's just use the integral definition of convolution. So sine of t minus tau times one half sine of two tau d tau. So you see, now we can use convolution to find Laplace transforms and also figure out which function has a Laplace transform which again is very important you know, in ODEs. In fact, the next video is about solving ODEs using convolution. But I do wanna say one more thing. If you're curious about the intuition behind convolution, there is a video that's attached to the lecture notes that you can check out. It's really sort of like polynomial multiplication.